the Occidental College campus is one of the most beautiful in the United States. Not because of the buildings, but because of the lack of, you know, of a, attack that you get from really fine architecture, like Frank Gehry. Frank Gehry would be absurd on the Oxy camp. Well, maybe off at the, at the, at the side somewhere that we'd like to get Gehry. But my point about that is that um, uh, Myron Hunt had the had in mind the sort of college that would um, express the idea of college, but not be too expensive. Um, that which was the, the point of view of the prestige. <laughs> and he got it. He got. He was a businessman's architect, and so I think he was wanting to do something that was sophisticated, and he did. And on the other hand, uh, not too wild. Uh, one of the things that is strange, I think, about uh, about Swan Hall, which of course fits in with the other old buildings perfectly, um, it is the fact that it's in three sections: north, middle, and, and south. And I, my, again, this is a surmise, but uh, I have a feeling that the three sections are separated completely from each other, largely due to um, uh, the fact that in uh, the 19th, 18th century, colleges were for boys, uh, 13, 14, 15, and they were hard to ma manage at a discipline. So, so he went in with that idea, which was the conventional college I, uh, dormitory idea. I had my office in one of the, uh, this is really a, an interesting thing. Uh, there was a, a wash basin in, in, the off, in the part of the office. It was not the sleeping porch. And when they took that out, I th they left a co an open column that I think had the plumbing in it. And they forgot to look into the roof and see notice that there were openings under the in, in the roof. And when I moved in, I thought it was very strange. I heard scratching all the time in in that column in particular. And uh, I, I I I finally realized it's those pigeons that are coming in and they're coming in. And laying eggs in the uh, in this column. <laughs> Instead, they were dying inside that column. And I don't know. There must have been a stink, but I I didn't notice that. And, but as I as I noted, uh, Charlene Liebau, who was director of uh, admissions at the time, she came over and and she said. She heard all this going on in the column, <laughs> and she said, "Bob, you have problems." <laughs> and I, I suddenly realized, of course, and uh, and the students, <laughs> the students were upset. I had some of my, uh, I cut my courses down into small groups to have discussions, and I would meet them in my office. And they would often wonder what in the heck is going on there. <laughs> well, poor Wellington Chan found out when he took over my office a few years ago. And he opened the door one day, and there was a great big pile of dead pigeons. Somebody jimmied the air vent, I think, in the in the ceiling, and they all kind of, and poor Wellington fled. Uh, in fact, he vomited. <laughs> Big joke. <laughs> well, I, certainly that problem is going to be solved. <laughs> well, it moved a few books, fell on the floor, but in my office, but not, not really too much happened. But then uh, the, the corner, the far corner of the building, the the. the what about on the uh, what would be the 
the southeast corner mm-hmm. uh, did have real problems and uh, the, the uh, stucco fell off. But to me it was terribly interesting because it showed the, the original uh, structure of the building. I told uh, the students that uh, obviously they need not worry about uh, having classes in Swan or coming into my office or anything like that, that if there were an earthquake, it would, uh, uh, it wasn't based on the ground very well, but it would, it would, it would uh, w- uh, wobble or, or skip down toward, uh, toward Iguac Boulevard. <laughs> and so not to worry at all about that, they'd be perfectly safe. <laughs> this unnerved a few <laughs> <of> the students. 